Hello, everyone, and good Tuesday evening to you. How are you? It is good to see you, and it is good to be seen by you. I, of course, am the one and only the Dungeon Delver. And if you're new here, and you might be, we've got uh, 12, 13, 14 new subscribers uh, on the channel just in the last couple of days. That's, that's pretty nice. Welcome. Thank you for sticking around. If you're wondering <clears throat> what it is that we're doing here, Five nights a week, guys, five nights a week, I strive to bring you live streams of classic Dungeons & Dragons topics, um, classic tabletop role-playing game topics. We hang out. We have a really good time, or at least I think we have a really good time. And on nights like tonight, we're going to play a little first edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons live for your entertainment for my players' entertainment, but not just entertainment, education also. So if you have any questions, if you've not played Classic D&D either in a long time or ever, please feel free to ask. Ask a question in the chat. Say, hey, uh, how do I... How are you doing this? How, how is that figured out? Why are you saying, oh, you've got an armor class one, and that's good? Um, you know, What do you mean a saving throw versus poison? Whatever. Just ask, and if, if a member of our excellent community doesn't answer, then I'll do my best to answer you as we play the game. These are unscripted games, all right? I don't sit back and chit chat with the players about the events that are going to unfold in the game and scenes and plot lines and seasons and story arcs and all that. Let the dice roll where they may. That's my mode and modus. And uh, I think you'll find that we have a lot of fun here on the show. We've got a good group uh, <clears throat> that uh that comes along and games with us um but uh yeah so so again welcome and if you are new here and you're not aware of this of course this is brought to you by our friends at hellebard games hellebard makes the kind of adventures that they'd like to play whether it's for castles and crusades fifth edition or the osr old school is in play at the table with Hellebar Games, and you can check them out on Drive Through RPG or on their own website, hellebardgames.com. Um, also, if you're new here, if you're wondering what is that, what is that text moving across? Or was it stocks? Is that the MSNBC feed or something? No, no. If you'd like to support the show via Patreon or by picking up a YouTube membership for as little as $2 on YouTube or a dollar on Patreon, you can support the show every month and help me bring more wonderful stuff to you guys. At our $10 level, starting this month, all of our $10 subscribers and members will get a free short First edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons module written by yours truly or by my co-host. Um, that's something you can drop into your AD&D or OD&D or however you want to tweak it campaign every month for free at the $10 support level. So I hope that's something you'll consider doing. But the best thing you can do the best thing you can do is please click that subscribe button, click the bell icon for notifications. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below and tell me what you liked. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down and leave a comment below and tell me what you didn't like. And I'll work to do more of it or less of it because I'm here for you guys. So anyway, I hope you're having a, a wonderful, wonderful evening. Um, but I know you, you guys, y'all, you, you, you guys in the chat will get will get pretty chatty. So I want to make sure that I didn't miss anyone uh, or, or any fun comments. Uh, hello, Naughty Professor, Local Gumby, Robert Phillips, Fuchsia, Vaughn Giffard. 
dungeon minister, of course, Zachary Melvin. You wonder who will die first. Zachary's already champing at the bit for some AD&D. Yes, he is. Wave of mutilation, if I didn't say hello to you already. EW, how's it going? Looking forward to a little AD&D, man. You got to find a local group. Start a local group, my friend. Go down to that FLGS. Stake out a table on a Saturday afternoon. Say, so we're playing D&D. Sit them down, roll up their characters, and just concentrate on having fun. Orbital Air, good to see you. Tonka Todd, hope you're feeling better on the mend, brother. Speaking of people who are on the mend, um, I know a lot of you guys caught this last night. Um, Ricky Maru, hello. Uh, join his. You have an AD&D game going, Ricky? That's awesome. Um, oh, Fuchsia. Okay, so Fuchsia is asking about the camera. Yes, the camera changed. Um, without that lens on there, you guys would be getting about this much. And I wanted you to see more. So I actually have a wide-angle lens. It's just the nature of a wide angle lens without me, you know, going out and spending a few hundred thousand dollars on a, uh, a on a red or a, uh, a digital Panaflex, you know, something I can absolutely afford. Uh, the little bit of fish eyeing you're getting out on the periphery it is just kind of the nature of it. The center is is in focus, um, and you know the edges the edges are what they are. Um, John Stuart Keller, I almost slipped up and said John Stuart Mill, preparing to run an all thief adventure. Anyone else ever run for a party of all the same class? Yes, I've run an all thief adventure. Uh, didn't last that long because you get, I find that with AD and D, you've got to have the utility of certain classes or as a DM, be willing to really bend things around like, okay, uh, you know, you need healing. Uh, nobody's a cleric thief, which is a, is a thing in AD&D. Cleric thief is a, is a thing in AD&D. Um, but nobody took that, you know, or you need to identify a magic item. It, it, it can get sticky, but I think it's doable. I think it's definitely doable. And Doom Sword accurately points out there's an all thief adventure in early the dungeon uh, magazine. Was it just dungeon magazine or was it the dungeon? I know dragon was the dragon for a long time, which I kind of prefer. It's a proper. Dungeon minister. I'm telling you my show on Tuesday nights is the perfect bedtime story for the boys. Okay. It's got action. It's got adventure. It's got treasure finding. It's got, it's got dungeon crawling. Just park him in front of the computer for two and a half hours. <laughs> it was dungeon. Okay. See, I actually don't own any dungeon. I have a bunch of PDFs of it, but I, I don't own any physical copies of dungeon. play a troll and you won't have to worry about it. Yeah, but, you know, that's monsters player class. Anyway, um, so what else is going on? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were speaking about health. Uh, last night, uh, I mentioned because over the weekend, Ernie Gygax, that's Ernest Gary Gygax Jr., Gary's eldest son, uh, and himself, uh, one of the one of the pioneers in tabletop role playing games, um, Ernie has fallen extremely ill with heart issues. It is my understanding that he is fixing to go into the hospital in Madison, and they are going to do uh, an invasive surgery in into his chest, into his heart, to find out what's going on. And that's supposed to happen tomorrow or the next day, I, I believe. Uh, but, um, of course, you know, he, he's in our thoughts, uh, and we'll hope that, uh, uh, we'll, we'll hope the best for Ernie that he is on the mend soon. Um, 
you know, I, I, I've been privileged enough uh, to get to know and talk to uh, so many members of the Gygax family. Uh, you know, Luke is, is perma busy, but the, the little bit of interaction I've had with him have been, has been positive. Uh, just, I, I talked to Alex a few times, but uh, probably not so much that he would, he would recall. Um, but he was on the show when we had uh, the Gary birthday celebration uh, back, back on the 27th of July. Um, and of course, uh, I'm working with Heidi Gygax and her awesome, wonderful husband, Eric. Uh, and yes, I did meet Gail in passing, uh, many, many, many years ago before, uh, uh, Gary, uh, passed away. And at the time, uh, she was perfectly polite, very nice to my wife and I, when we dined with the Gygaxes. So, um, you know, I, I can honestly say I've had positive interactions with all of them and including Ernie. So of course we hope the absolute best for Ernie and that he will come out of this healthier and, and uh, be with us for a really long time because, Hey, uh, I got to pin him down one day and have him on the show and have him tell us all about Eric's cousin and Eric. And maybe he'll even tell us what Eric's cousin's real name is. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about the drow. I think the drow were Gary's, but uh, Ernie created the Bullywug. The Bullywug were uh, Ernie's creations. Gary helped him stat him up. So if uh, your first encounter with a Bullywug was in Dwellers in the Forbidden City, which we did a deep dive series on some months back, of course, uh, those, those are Ernie Gygax's critters. They are credited in the Fiend Folio, uh, not not a favorite monster book of mine for AD and D. For me, it goes Monster Manual, Monster Manual two, and I would almost, if it wasn't for the deities, if if they had just published a you know a Monster Manual three that was the critters in deities and demigods, I would put deities and demigods before the Fiend Folio. But there are some really solid monsters in. Fiend Folio, among them are the Bullywugs. So, see, here's my here's my issue with Fiend Folio. So much of it is from the Fiend Factory in White Dwarf Magazine, and they're not good entries. And I know this. I speak I speak from experience. I I used to have a website that my my first presence on the internet uh as far as D, D is concerned um i had been on the internet for like 12 years by 1999 but um yeah i i know what crappy monsters are and the fiend polio is full of them so um so yeah no i uh light main take care Take care. Um, but uh, anyway, yes, uh, back, back to the point, and the point being that we wish all the best to Ernie, and uh, we hope, 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 hope that Ernie will, uh, will come through this and that everything will be hunky-dory. So... Uh, if you don't know, like, how we roll through the week here on the show, Monday nights, generally, we have kind of some RPG news. We've just added a new feature. We've been doing it for a few weeks. I kind of like it. It's the Dungeon Diorama. Um, it's some painted miniatures, sometimes by myself, sometimes done by my wife, sometimes done by unknown folks. If I bought a lot of minis that are... That are uh, painted already, uh, and some by some other friends of mine... We set it up over here. I might move it over the table just so I don't have to have the camera right here. Um, and we uh, we take a look at it. And every little diorama tells a story. Uh, now, obviously, I don't have a camera zoomed in on it. But we've got a, uh, a cleric 
and a magic user or thief or some combination thereof squaring off against a water weird in a dungeon hallway. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll bring you some more of that um, every week. Uh, and again, we start on that on Monday with our RPG news and general open talk. And of course, on Tuesdays, we have a little pr- bit of preamble ramble, and then we jump in from 9 to 11 and play first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons for your entertainment. Wednesdays, I hand the reins over to my co-host, Kyle Shuant, and what Shuant wants, Shuant gets. Uh, Thursday, it uh, depends. Thursday, I like to have guests on, or just you know just just a little rpg chat and chill this week this thursday we have the one and only bill t truth a from paint minis live he's gonna be here and we're gonna talk about azarath the red dragon that is the red dragon set that i sent to him that it did such a beautiful job and we'll have some glamour shots of azarath for you guys to see and to drool over um and uh friday we kind of do what we're doing now we just chit chat for a half an hour about nothing specific but then at nine o'clock on friday we play classic science fiction rpgs and right now uh we have got an adventuring group in gamma world that's right we're playing some first edition gamma world on friday nights so you're going to want to tune into that and give that a listen and enjoy the heck out of it like i know you will like I know you will. So um, so th- those are those are just a few of the cool things that we do uh, during the week, you know. And sometimes the schedule gets changed up a little bit. You know, if I, let's just say Jeff Easley said, yes, I would love to be on your show, but I'm only available on Monday nights. Well, we would have Jeff. We would have Jeff on on a Monday night, or on a Tuesday night. Whatever we can move things around. We're flexible like that. So let me see here. But anyway, now that I've run my mouth, I want to know how how are you guys? How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing absolutely wonderful. You know, I've talked a lot on the show. I've talked a lot on the show, and I, I've talked about it um, on and off again. Uh, my feelings on using AI in tabletop gaming. Now, personally, I don't think is if you're using AI to take some of the drudgery out of out of your game to keep things moving a little bit faster i think that's fine i think it's a great tool but this is something that came up today uh because we were talking about ernie you know um one of ernie gygax's famous characters and uh he's actually detailed here in the rogues gallery which uh we're gonna do a we're going to do a deep dive on this one day. But one of his, one of Ernie Gygax's characters is detailed in here, and it's Arak's cousin. The original Arak died in Castle Greyhawk. This mysterious figure has never revealed his true name. Uh, he was once a lawful good magic user. However, an unknown insanity overtook him, and he slew all of his henchmen and companions, stealing their goods. After this, he left off being a magic user and began anew as a fighter, eventually to become a uh, dual-class human magic user fighter. Eric's cousin is thoroughly evil, having made a pact with Balzabal. In exchange for the souls of those he slays, Balzabal has agreed to make a major devil of Eric's cousin when he dies. He is, however, afraid of death, and if there's any means to prevent or delay it, i.e. wishes, potion of longevity, etc., he will try to obtain it. Obviously, such a character, uh, with such a character, Eric's cousin has no friends. If he associates with people, uh, it's either to fulfill his bargain or to further his own greed. 
The greed is great, and especially so for magic items. He will do whatever necessary to acquire such items. And then it goes on to list off uh, some of the magic items he's got. Now, in none of that description does it describe him as being a fun-loving wizard. I mean, maybe he was before he had his big alignment change. But I have, uh, I have a chat GPT account. Yes, I use a spoofed phone number to get it. Don't at me. Um, chat GPT will tell you it knows a lot about the history of Dungeons and Dragons. So I said, I even gave it a chance, you know. I feel like Yafit Kato in Live and Let Die, a.k.a. the best James Bond movie ever. I'm not saying there aren't other good ones. I'm just saying Live and Let Die is the best one primarily because it has the most beautiful James Bond girl, Jane Seymour, um, as solitaire. But he asks solitaire to make sure she hasn't lost her psychic power to read the serial number on the back of James Bond's watch. And she rattles off a series of numbers and he acts like she got it, ushers everybody out of the room and leans in and said, I gave you every chance you didn't get a single number right. And I feel kind of the same way with the AI because I gave it the I, I gave it every every advantage. I said, hey, what can you tell me about Eric's cousin? That was Ernest Gary Gygax Jr.'s character that he played in Dungeons and Dragons with his dad. I gave it enough background for it to dig deep into its primary sources and come back with an answer that more or less fit. It gave me very fun, cool character backgrounds. None of them, none of them were for Eric's cousin. All the data was false. All of the, every time. It told me he was a magic user once, which he kind of was. But it didn't go on to say any of that. In all of them, it, it portrayed him as a fun-loving, positive uh, influence in the campaign which I just read it to you in black and white. He's not. So I'm, I'm okay with saying to it, hey, help me write a program in C that can do this drudgery work out of the, the um, Dungeon Master's Guide to the Monster Manual, the Player's Handbook, and then you feed at the table and charts and just kind of hope for the best. Uh, I'm okay with using it to say, type at it, uh, help me populate a small town, populations about 500 people, um, go. Oh, AJ Pickett, thank you very much. Thank you very much. AJ Pickett says, I feel like that is how Watsi is doing their lore research now. Uh, AJ, I feel like you're probably right. Um, so thank you for the super very much, AJ. We really appreciate that. That's very helpful. Uh, so anyway, I'm okay with doing that. Don't lean on it. Don't lean on it for broad information that you don't already have an inkling about in whatever you're doing. Look, it's fun. Okay, I'm old enough to remember eagerly typing in Eliza on my Commodore 64. I, I, I filched a copy of Creative Computing from the 70s that had the program listing for Eliza. And I took it home and I typed it in on my Commodore 64 uh, in basic. And I poked around and it was fun to say, you know, I like to skateboard. I like to write basic, and it's like, that is nice. I am glad that you, it, it's really just a, just a more, it, it has a richer parser. And a parser is, is essentially a language processor. If you ever played a text adventure, Zork, anything like that, that that's how, how it thinks is through its parser is how it interprets what you're putting into it it's just trained on more data sets than what the inside of the zork dungeon is like
Exactly, Fuchsia. Exactly. It's not a universal tool. It's not a universal tool. Um, anybody in eastern Kansas want a Commodore 64? I, <laughs> for the duration of this conversation, I wish I was in eastern Kansas because I would take that from you, James Seymour. I'd be like, hell yes. <laughs> I'll take it. Let's meet up. But I'm not in eastern Kansas, unfortunately. Um, so don't, don't be afraid. Don't, don't be afraid to, um, to have some fun with, uh, with chat GPT. Just, just don't rely on it as your primary source. Don't don't feel like, you know, oh, well, I got to use this data for goodness sake. Now, there are some companies that we talked about this a little bit. I actually did a video. Uh, Drive through RPG will apparently start putting tools in place that will look for AI generated text content. I don't know how it's possibly going to find it. I don't know if there's a particular cadence because unlike an AI gem generated image where, you know, too many teeth, the eyes aren't right. The hands are completely screwed up. I mean, you know, what's, what's gonna, what's gonna fix that, you know? Oh, I wish I could take that off your hands. I really wish I could take that off your hands. James, I, I absolutely do. Slade says, I'm a lawyer. I've asked it to cite case law. It just makes up cases completely. Yeah, it's good at stuff like that. And I've said, I've said before, um, and AI is not going to take your job. A person who knows how to better use AI is going to take your job. Learning, understanding how to use an AI will become as critical as understanding how to use an email program, how to use Microsoft Word, and that sort of thing. But if you if you stick to it to let it help you do drudgery, it's it's fine and it's not scary. So barring anything major coming along, that's probably all I'm really ever going to talk about AI. Um, one other thing I want to make this I've been thinking a lot today. I'm moving very close to doing a uh, arts and crafts channel off of my main channel um, where I talk about doing 3D printing and miniature painting and things like that. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Don't know if it'll happen in September, but it's coming. It's coming. So if you've ever thought, hey, I'm going to get one of those printers and I'm going to do that, where do I start? I will do everything I can to share all the positivity because uh, strangely enough, like I'll just tell you guys this real quick because we're going to get playing first edition AD&D here in just a minute. Um, manufacturers can be frighteningly silent after you purchase a printer. And you're like, okay, I, I just bought a printer. It was 99 bucks. Does nobody else in the world have one? You need to look on Reddit, you look on Facebook, you look online in general, and maybe you find one person who's got this model or is experiencing the same issue you are. So, so, um, so that's, uh, that, that's just, just something, something that I want to share with you guys. And speaking of things that I'd like to share with you guys. Let me put on my creamy rich AKG headphones. By the way, AKG, I love your headphones. 
this is not a this is not a sponsored thing but if you if you want to do a sponsorship if you're out there akg uh give me a call we'll talk i'll listen let us welcome our players because we left off with a cliffhanger last week uh so let us welcome in my buddy doomsword deathmaster as vroog What's up, guys? Mark as Grimsby the Thief. Bonjour, mes amis. He wasn't here last week, but he's come back around. Mobius as Duran the Cleric. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he's LARPing as Metallus from uh, the old Space Ghost show. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're still uh <laughs> it's nice Mobius nice it, it is it is it's a it, with these headphones it's a it's a good rich bass sound i can tell you that and uh, of course uh the one and only the inimitable tk as sir standard guten abend meine freundin oh he's just making weird sounds too fix your mic <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Is Mobius is Mobius back? Are you back? Nope. Nine, nine, okay. nine, 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 nine. So, uh, no, there's just the one of him. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Last week, uh, the party was on their way out of the Hobgoblin lair. They had just felled the giant Hobgoblin chief. A single sword blow from Vrug's longsword brought the creature creature da crashing down. They grabbed as much loot as they could and taking their grievously injured uh, partner, Tonstall, who is still ambulatory, but only just, and their men at arms. Yep. Uh, do you know the words now, Mobius, or are you going to hum at us some more? <laughs> I guess that answers that question. <laughs> uh, you know, I, hold up. I think if Mobius's God existed, this is what he would sound like. Yes. <laughs> it's the All person. right. Okay, so you are making your way out of the uh, out of the the hobgoblin lair. You round a corner. You're going down a long stretch of hall. The, the stink in the air is slightly less. The air is slightly less oppressive. You realize you might be getting towards the exit. And then, as you round a corner, you see them. A group of four hobgoblins spoiling for a fight. One of them with a bardiche, another with a bow, a third with a spear, and a fourth with a morning star. And they point at your group. And one of them says... No grata kill human. They're about 40 feet away down a long hallway. Let's get our declarations. Uh, what is Vrug Dorn doing? Well, I mean, I'm charging, obviously. Oh, they're highly offended at that. They're not going to take that out of you. So you're charging with a capital C. Um, yes, sir. Tonstall. Uh, holding his hand over the bloody gash in his armor, painfully draws his sword and uh, sets, uh, basically sets against uh, a charge that might come rushing in. Um, Mark, what is Grimsby doing? I think they said something about killing humans, so I'm okay. But just in case, I'll hide in shadows. One of them is taking out a large hoagie roll and spreading garlic butter on it and eyeing you dangerously. <laughs> Grimsby looks unappetizing. That's what that's <laughs> Just stand there and look as gamey as possible. Okay. Uh, Sir Standard, what about you and your men at arms? I'll order the men at arms in front. Um, they and uh, I will be loosing arrows. I presume I have probably less than a 50% chance of shooting my friend in the back of the head. Uh, with four hobgoblins, uh, three are in front. The uh, uh, the Bardish wielder is in the rear. 
yeah, you've probably got a less than 50% chance. Now, charges go before initiative per the Dungeon Master's Guide. Execute your charge, Doom Sword, and uh, remember, you do get a bonus. Let's uh, hopefully the, our die roller is up and up and working. I've gotten a couple of messages on their Discord that they had had a, a bit of an outage, but I believe it should be copacetic. I think so. All right. Let's fly. All right, let me just make sure I got my stuff set up here. There we go. That'll be at a plus I'd, four. I would say I'd be aiming for the guy with the bargeesh. Okay. Yeah, that's going uh, miss. Bring their shields up and, and push you back. Uh, so the, he was not able to set his spear before your charge. So let's go ahead and roll initiative. Um and uh, we'll just we'll start with uh, we'll we'll start with uh, uh, Doom Sword to roll initiative, please. Okay, uh, arrows. Uh, fire fire your first arrow. Yep. That's oh, I saw that. Uh, an eleven. Yes, that is uh, well. No, that is not going to hit. Yes, that will not hit. <laughs> no, that does not miss. Um, can get very confusing. Uh, so let's see. Fighter one. These guys are. Just quick look at my notes. An eleven. Ah, uh, no, that does sail over them. Okay. Uh, the two men at arms advance normally so they now have a target rich environment so we're going to go down we're going to start um we'll, we'll start with a player character we'll start with doom sword and that is a miss uh a man at arms is being struck at with a morning star Ooh, AC six i believe AC six and hobgoblins are one plus one, so yes, that will hit him. Alas, poor Yorick. <laughs> yeah, or he is. Uh, and the the Morning Star does two to eight. Hey, hey, he could he could take a, a minimal amount of damage. We've seen where there's two d four is not promising. No, it's, it's not promising. Good average though. Seven points. Seven points. Yeah, he's at negative one. Wham. Bam! And he goes down. Thank you, ma'am. Ma <laughs> and uh, the last weapon blow is um, coming from a sword. A short sword, in fact. Yes, word. And that is a miss. Uh, so he, he takes a blow, cries out, and crumples to the floor. Second arrow shot, please. Yep. And uh, this time I will put my plus one bonus in. Okay. I didn't need that last. Eh, it didn't matter. All right. Sails, uh, sails across them. Okay. Uh, Tonstol uh, cries out, For the keep! And advances in this round. Injured though he is, he, he sees the, the fighting man slump to the floor and Stabilize marches. Him. Stabilize him. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, um, Vrug, you're right in the thick of it. You're going to uh, you're going to swing on and attack. Um, fighting man will attack. What about Grimsby and TK? Uh well I still have an I still have an arrow for the guy with the bardiche and I just hasn't you know I haven't found the right one yet so I'm gonna keep throwing arrows until I find them. Of course, of course. Um and Grimsby. Uh, Grimsby's gonna keep his head low so as not to get hit by arrows and s try to sneak up a little bit. Okay. Um. All right. So you're shuffling forward ten feet, twenty feet, thirty feet because they were they're about forty feet away when you encountered them. Um, I, I want to get up so that I can get into combat if needed. Okay, so you're going to move up about 30 feet. I got gotcha. you. That's good. Uh, gritting his teeth, glancing over his shoulder as he advances, uh, Tonstall says, uh, Grimsby, help the fallen. Uh, and roll initiative for us, if you would, please, Mark. 
I think I'm going to be helping him as Fallen pretty soon. All right. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, that's how it's All happened. right, party goes first. Let's start with Vroog. All right, with the renewed fury, I attack at the sight of the fallen man-at-arms. I didn't particularly like him or anything, but... Hey, for the dead man! He's one of the ones we didn't have to pay. Uh, that, like is a a lot more. that is a solid hit. Roll your damage, sir. Maybe we should get the ones we have to pay in the danger more so we don't actually have to pay them. All right, so that's a total of four. Uh, he staggers back under the force of the blow but holds fast. Missile fire, please. Fire your first arrow. Yep. Let's see. And uh, with the plus one. Uh, Twelve. Let's see. Yeah, because cause that's what it would have been when it missed last time. Uh, yeah, so that, uh, that, that, that still misses getting a little bit closer, um, and, uh, attack with the man at arms or did you already? No, I you did not. not yet. I have not yet. No, let's see. And no, that will miss. Okay. Um, all right. So hobgoblin attack on Vrug. 15, Vrug, your armor class. Yeah, it's is, recently upgraded to 1. It's recently upgraded to 1. So, uh, yeah, that clangs off of your shield, um, striking the man at arms. That is a miss, and striking at Tonstol. Oh, no! Um, do I get my second arrow DM? Uh... Yes, after after their uh, after their melee tonstal, <laughs> we didn't heal tonstal. Whatever, you did not. Uh, tonstal slumps to the floor. Uh, Grimsby, you are all that stands between tonstal, a man at arms, and uh, eternity. So uh, you better you better step up. Uh, fortunately, Tonstall was not slain outright because he was not dropped to negative three or lower. He just needs to be stabilized at some point in the next, uh, let's see, at one and then zero minus one in the next nine rounds, he needs to be stabilized. Um, so arrow, please. Yavol. And plus one and go. That is a hit. Well, I finally found the right arrow. That is a four, and that that thuds into the Bardisher who who screams in pain and unable to reach you. He will swing at Vrug. And that will miss. That clangs off your armor. Okay. Uh, it's a new round. Um, Vrug, you're going to continue to fight? Yeah, I'm going to attack the, you know, uh, the one that I've already hit. Okay, okay. Uh, Mark, what about Grimsby? Grimsby will try to stabilize Tonstall and then the Men-at-Arms. Okay. Um, well, Tonstall had stabilized the Men-at-Arms. Oh, cool. So. I'll try to stabilize so Tonstall then. All right. Um... Sir Standard, you're still firing arrows. Absolutely, they will be loose. All right, well, roll initiative, please. Sure. Six. Oof. Okay. Bardi Shear on, on uh, Brug. Oh, we're using the same color. Um, that is a miss. Um, Morning Star on Brug. That is an edge case. Let's see. But that is a miss. That is just a miss. Okay. Uh, this one is going at Grimsby. This is a short sword at Grimsby. And that is a miss on Grimsby. Uh, let's see. Bardashir, Morningstar, 
uh, and what was the other? Oh, a spear, a spear on the other men at arms. Oops. And that is a miss. Counterattacks, if you please. Um, Come on. You can... All right. That'll be a 17. That is a hit. That should finish this guy. Five more. Uh, that's actually... Total nine. Uh, total of nine. That's enough to drop him. So Morningstar is yes. down. Barty Shear is, is kind of maneuvering over to fill that hole. Um, I see a four. That is a miss. Uh, right, who, who rolled? Right, yeah. That That's was your me. first arrow. Yep. All right. Uh, Mark, you're stable. Arm. All right. Armsman. And arms next. He didn't get anything. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, I saw that 20 almost pop up. Okay, uh, that is a miss. And fire your second arrow, please. This is without the plus one, so 14 total. 14 total. Consulting oh, no, the chart. 14, case. 14 to come on. Come on, scrolly mouse. You can do it. I know you can. Don't make me bounce you off the table again. Uh, that is sufficient. That will hit him. Nice. Let's see. Can I read this color? No, I cannot read that color at all. All right, three. Three. Okay. And you had done. Uh, had you potted or, him before? Four or five before. One of the two. Uh, yes, that is enough to bring him down. There are two remaining. Oh. Are, okay. Um, let me see here. And I'm guessing more of the same in the next round. Right. So the uh, <clears throat> Bardishir is gone and the Morningstar guy is gone. Correct? That's correct. You have a spear and a short sword left. Right. And which one's closest to me on my right flank? Because those two guys were in front of me. Um, on your right flank, it's going to be short sword. Yeah. I'm going to attack him. No, okay. I'm going to cleave him in half. Hell with okay. it. Okay. The uh, melee in front of you is such a uh, sort of standard that uh, even odds you might shoot one of your friends in the back if you want to close up and melee in this round. I'm going to close up. I'm going to close up and melee, but I'm going to have the men at arms assist Verug. Okay. Um. Well, that just leaves Grimsby. What is Grimsby doing? Can I hit somebody in the shin? Uh, Hobgoblin, hopefully. Well, I'm yeah, down here. You're, you're right there. You can you can definitely melee. Um, dart in, dart out. I'm gonna regret it, but sure. <laughs> okay, how about uh, how about initiative, Doom Sword? Please roll for us. Ooh. All right, party goes first. Uh, let's start with Vrug. Take this. 17. Oh, ha! Yeah, you behead him. He falls to the floor. Mark, roll for Grimsby. 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 Uh, Grimsby. Plus one dagger. Doink. 13. Probably not going to hit. A 13 from a level one thief, probably not, but let's check it anyway. Uh, no, that will not. Uh, and roll for the man at arms, please. Sure. Here's hoping. 17, that is a hit. Roll damage. I didn't think that was going to hit. All right. Um, six. All right, he drives his weapon in and drops the Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin falls to the floor dead. Extra uh, pay for you. No more we Hobgoblin. pay him. He's free. You're going to pay him. <laughs> I'm not paying him anything. He's free. Okay, um, he immediately sets about to cutting purses off of the Hobgoblins. Yeah, let's take care of that and get out of here. Absolutely. That's fine. Okay. Uh, you come up with a total of 45 copper and 25 gold. Well, I guess let's 
add the 25 gold to everything. And... Yep. Alrighty. And, and now, now we have two people uh, unconscious that we need to drag out. Yes? Yeah. Uh, that is correct. So, um, Mark, are you going ahead of the party while the three still ambulatory carry the two that are not? Yep, yep, and I'll be doing so as quietly and sneakily as possible. Okay. Is there a, um, how how long would it take to, like, drag these bodies out of the entrance area here or whatever and off to the side? Uh, so let's take a look at the module. Let me open that up real quick. Because you guys are in a corridor that um, I gotta zoom in. Thank you as always, Adobe, for oh, you went over to another page. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saving your preferences between pages, fat boy. Um, all right. <laughs> so you're in the long hallway that goes back to the common room. Um, not the first common room, but the second common room. Um, I mean, as far as length of time, depends on where you want to go with them. There, there's just bare hallway or, or bare walls to your left and your right where you fought these guys at. But the common room is just like another 20 feet beyond them and to the south. I was just going to drag them outside for the vultures or whatever, but if it's an excessive period of time, then I'll forego that. that. That would be an excessive period of time, considering you have uh, two fully equipped characters who are unconscious and also need to be carried. Right, right. Good point. Yeah. Let's go. Thank okay. You. So we'll take one more check. All right, you are finally breathing the relatively fresher air outside in the ravine. Your men at arms there uh, look aghast when they see that you're carrying a couple of, of unconscious uh, warriors and they quickly move to drape them across Tonstall's horse. So you've got men at arms and Tonstall on Tonstall's horse. And uh, then you've got uh, the rest of you can mount up and you can head back towards the keep if that's what you want to do if you want to go into another cave that's also crumulant i'm i am butcher game master let's go back to the keep no let's go into another cave the dm recommended it, it must have been a great <laughs> idea uh, hey, we're no. missing what we're missing what cleric ranger fighter yep he he wouldn't suggest it if it wasn't a good idea Okay, so nothing untowards happens on your journey back to the keep. The uh, the midday sky, uh, sun shines hot above you. Uh, you arrive at the keep. There are many shouts uh, uh, of of surprise and and welcome. The drawbridge is lowered. The outer portcullis is open. You enter. Um, they actually open both portcullises. They don't like open, you go in, close, and then open. They open both, and you're let in. That's that's the reputation you've built for yourselves at the keep in the uh, in, in the the two months that you've been there. Even Vrug, as repugnant as he can be, Mister uh, <laughs> Mister Charisma Four Half Orc, um, is, six uh, six. Six, I'm sorry, six. Uh, eight to other orcs. Eight to other orcs. Um, so you're only slightly below average on the charisma department. Um, yeah, yeah. So yes, they 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 greet you. The guards are are pointing. Um, there's uh, there's actually uh, a young boy runs up with a bucket of water and said, to, "Will this help your friends?" Just, you know that sort of thing. And it's funny you mention it because I was going to say as I entered, the, and now that there's the little boy with the bucket of water, I hold up the hobgoblin's uh, chieftain's head that's attached to the rope at my belt. Maybe it'll help him. <laughs> wow, that's so cool! Isn't it, though? Gosh, mister, did you kill that ogre all by yourself? 
<laughs> Not all by myself. I had a bit of help from me friends. All by myself. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Hey, I see Duran. Is it Duran or is it Metallus in disguise? Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> I think he's just I, I think he's just holding an electric razor to his mic to mess with us now. Um, oh, that's great. Um, um, so Farouk seems to have gotten a new henchman, this little boy. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll get him killed straight away. <laughs> yeah. Well, Come on, you. you could be my link boy. Get shot full of arrows. <laughs> Hey, kids, uh, can you hold the torch? Good. The shield's as tall as you are. Stand behind it and hold the torch. Yeah. Um, it, we have, uh, just to get straight down to the accounting portion of this game. Um, thank God. We, yeah, thank God. The A and A D D. &D. We have um, trade goods to sell, which I think I've got the best charisma, so maybe I'll go deal with that. Someone could okay. Someone can take the, the, uh, the mostly dead uh, companions here to uh, put them in a bed someplace. Um, I'm going to go see to that wand. So, Vrug, have fun ferrying dead men. I mean, mostly dead men. Mm, yeah, but I need to show this head to somebody. I don't think he's going anywhere. <laughs> no, he probably ain't, but he's starting to stink. Go get a drink. Our, our, our men-at-arms can go take the take the uh, mostly dead characters to the inn, perhaps. That's fair. Well, we got three of them. Yeah, that'll work. All right. Uh, are we giving Vrug a chaperone, or are we letting him do this all by himself? Vrug's an adult. Are you sure about for that? a half orc? For a half orc? Are He's one sure? of Man, I thought I was drinking. What am I? What? What am I doing again? He needs you're a gonna to some, You're going to talk to someone about that head. Oh, I'm definitely going to do that. I figured I'd start in my bar. Well, good place for it. Actually, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Go for it, Brug. Have fun. So you're taking the uh, you're you're taking the the hobgoblin head to the bar to tell Shaggy stories with. Yeah, yeah, the hobgoblin chieftain's head. I'm going to yell yeah. after you to make sure to use it as a sock puppet. <laughs> Pull yeah, on just lick it. Pains in the spine. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't cut my head off. <laughs> what? It's hilarious. Okay, so um, all right, so you head off to the Black Main Tavern. Um, so we're gonna. I, I'm. I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna bring a uh, uh, Mobius. I'm gonna bring you on. I'm gonna leave your audio channel muted, my friend, and you can still roll dice and comment uh, in the live chat. Um, let me. Let me see. Let me bring you back here. Hey, it's working now. Can you, Mobius? Can you give us a mic check? Looks like you were doomed to typing. Yeah, I think you're going to have to talk, my friend. Or uh, type, rather. Type, type, not talk. Type and not talk. But you can still roll dice and you can still participate. Uh, so the party comes back. You've, you've, been, you've been evangelizing, uh, doing what have you in the keep. Um, Tonstal is down. He's been wounded, uh, brought below zero, and a man in arms has been brought below zero. So uh, if you want to cast some Cure Light Wound spells on them, now is your time to shine, if you'd like. And that's going to be uh, a D8 for each. Uh, apparently, he just decided to go. <laughs> he said, nope, not healing them. Bye. All right. Maybe. Well, we'll do a cure light wounds then. That is um, that that gets uh, that, that that gets your your friend uh, Tonstall back up. He is conscious now, but he can't really go out adventuring for a while. And um, let's see. Oh, I missed some comments. Hey, squirrel, how are you? Good to see you. And. This one is on Hedgeman. 
Oh, he's feeling much better. <laughs> yeah, he's back to full. Yes, he's he's back to full, but he still was brought below zero. So unfortunately, or was he brought below zero? Oh, or was he brought? Yeah, okay, he, yeah. He was so, brought negative one. So yep. Yeah. All right. So yeah, he'll he'll be he'll be taking a send night rest in the keep. Um, so all that's going on. Vrug, your reputation precedes you. So I'm going to say that uh, your charisma is currently evened out and uh, people are horrified by the head. You put the head up on the bar and the bartender's like, ah, what are you doing? Driving my customers off. Get a platter under that. Yeah, that's your job, man. It's also your job to drink a honey mead. Okay. Uh, yeah he he pours you a, he pours you a honey meat and kind of reaches around the head. Uh, yeah, but one for you as well, and one for everyone sitting at this bar. Okay, I'm gonna add fifty percent to that reaction roll, and they are they are now officially a lot less disgusted as you proceed to tell them the uh, the the lay of the slaying of the hobgoblin chief. Um, back over to. Grimsby, what are you doing? Um, I was going to sell. I, I, re I remember. Mark remembers we had trade goods like cloth and stuff. Uh -huh. But I don't remember. I, I unfortunately did not write down exactly what we had. So please, DM, be kind to me and just say I sold stuff and here's ten gold pieces or something. Unless someone, one of us remembers what we had. Okay. Well, the the trade goods, the bolts of cloth, the various odds and ends that you took out of the goblin and hobgoblin storage rooms, uh, I'm going to say will net you a total of forty gold pieces. Okay. Thank you. That works. And then I'll head to. Hey, I'm uh, sorry. Can I? Uh, I'm sorry. Can I ask a quick question? Uh, how many people would have been sitting at the bar? Those meads are like a gold each, right? So. I just oh, want to make sure I keep track of that. And uh, let me put a multiplier dice on that. So, uh, yeah, it turns out the entire population of the keep. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> uh, there, there's about a... It's early in the day. There's not a huge population of people in here. Um, but let's see. Life kind of folks. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there's literally just uh, 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 just a few older workmen who are supervisors. Um, one of the acolytes from the temple is there um, having a breakfast, which he is. He, you, you bring the head out of the sack and set it on the bar, and he just shoves his plate away and mumbles and starts working his prayer beads. Um, so uh, Mark Grimsby has sold. Uh, Sir Standard, where are you taking the wands to be identified? Um, I know there was somebody in town that could do it. And now the player he is failing to remember who. No, no, that's okay. The head of the loan bank is a ma is a magic user uh, a who has. Reader, that wasn't right. Um, well, you're close. You're close. The house of the exchequer, please. All right. Uh, so he tells you that uh, to identify it uh, will be one hundred gold pieces. I can do that. Okay. So he, you know. Kind of sights down the wand, balances it on his fingertip, balances on it on his fingertip, and it's a wand. So, like you know, he balances on its fingertip, and it just stays there, right? Because it's a wand; it's magic. Stupid humans and their stupid inflation. And he slides his he kind of slides his finger on it, and he he looks at you and arches his eyebrow and says, "That, my boy, is a wand of paralysis." I do not know how many charges it has on it, but I suspect it could be as many as ten. Perhaps as few as four. This magic word, writ here, in fact, he points at it, and you can faintly read the runes, and it is writ here, R-I-T-T-H-R, writ here. This magic word, writ here, 
when said, and the wand held thusly and pointed, has the potential to freeze any man or reasonable beast in its tracks. A most potent item, I should say. Cool. Um, if I were to sell it, I would get how much for it in its present state? Oh, oh my boy. I, neither myself nor even the Castellan here has the funds to, to afford uh, such an item as so deemed by the Mages Guild. Uh, this, is, this is a frontier keep, you must understand, my lad. We are uh, not offer. all people of means. Best offer. My boy, I am telling you, I could not give you a decent offer for that wand. Not anything approaching its value. Perhaps if I were to offer you everything here and all the coin to my person, you would leave, how do the youth say, ripped off. The utility of the item is greater than any amount of, of funds that I could give you. That's not to say that if I... If I had the money, I wouldn't eagerly purchase it from you, were I an adventuring type. But it is, it is, it, it is simply more than I could afford. All right, but my party fighters aren't going to like that, so, oh well. I'll take it. Okay. He, he he's, wait, rummage is behind the counter and slides a mahogany uh, tubular case over to you. Appreciated. It's quite lovely. It's chased with silver. You think it must be worth at least 10 gold pieces. This is the money lender. Good. And he, 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 he just handed you something that is like almost the entire yearly salary for a working man for to, to store the one. Yeah, Go okay. well. Go well, my son. The, yeah. All right. Well, all right. Let's head. Let's head back, and I get to explain to the lovely idiot half orc that this stick is worth more than his life. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, by taking possession of that stick, uh, you gain thirty five hundred experience points. Cool. And then I multiply that by. Well, divide that by two, and then multiply each by one point one. Uh, yes, divide that by two and then multiply each by 1.1. 1. 1. And I believe that will... Uh, will that put you over on e on either? Uh, I very much I very much doubt it, but I'll, but I'll check. Uh, well, tell I have a player's handbook handy here, so tell me what your XP totals are for each of your uh, classes. Sure. sure. Uh, let's see here. Five... Let's, all right, there we go. Uh, 2,464. Uh, 2,464. That leaves you uh, just a shade under level two on magic user. However, fighter, I can tell you unequivocally that that will, uh, that will put you as a second level fighter. There we oh, go. Well, that is enough XP uh, because fighters uh, g uh, cross over at 2,001. Yep, and I have nowhere near the funds. I don't think Varug does either, right? We're we're all relatively No, clear. no, I don't. I have uh I have somewhere I haven't uh taken into account the new gold, but I have uh for experience or treasure, but I have somewhere in the neighborhood of about uh five hundred and fifty gold. Nice. I've got 200 now. Let's all convene at the tavern where yep. Grimsby will buy himself a beer and buy the Hobgoblin head a beer. And then <laughs> the town and we can figure out the split of the treasure. Absolutely. Um, I will inform you about the wand situation. And, so that's um, your split of the treasure, I take it. Well, I'm going to apologize because I tried to sell it because I wanted to split it between all of us. They wouldn't buy. So, so if we split the rest of the the uh, the loot we got uh, four ways, that would be Vrug, myself, uh, Boone, and Tonstall. Mm -hmm. Um, sorry, I didn't actually do the math. Um, but if we do that, 
ten four seven. Uh, it's uh, two hundred and two two sixty two gold each. Or Vrug, yeah. Vrug, uh, Grimsby, Tonstall, and Boone. Nice. Okay. Uh, in the in the interim, uh, um, it, it, it took some jamming to get it down in there, but the uh, the bartender has produced a a jar of brine, and the hobgoblin chieftain's head has been sort of. You know, mashed. It's like the face is pressed up against it. Uh, so, your your hobgoblin head is preserved, Brug. Yeah, that's a nice play. That's why I keep you employed. However, this is a chieftain, you know. This is the strongest thing we've seen at the caves. Mayhaps, as far as we're aware, be the most powerful man in the place. I'm sure this would interest somebody of higher station than yourself. Uh, well, he says he's wiping wiping his hands off, making sure he doesn't have any lice from the thing's head. Uh, well, um, I, I mean, uh, you know, you boys have, have uh, made quite a name for yourself. Uh, I've heard talk from the from the uh from the watch from the the guards on the wall that have come in there they've nothing but good things to say about you uh did you not rescue uh some hostages that were being held by these self-same hobgoblins uh, yeah we did but this be their chief don't you have a sergeant at arms or something might be interested in such an i uh, like you could you could go see the sergeant at arms. I, I'm I'm not his keeper. I well, I'm a barkeep, and he comes here sometimes. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know where he is either. That's why I'm asking you. Oh, he'll be on patrol or up on the wall uh, on on patrol here in the in the keep or up on the walls somewhere. Mm, fair enough. I took off twenty gold for buying people stuff. Was that uh was that enough? Yeah, that, absolutely, absolutely. All right. So just as far as book, bookkeeping goes, grooms he can level up if he can find a thieves guild to level up with, and he needs like two hundred more gold. Okay. Yeah, and I'm about I'm about four away. I've uh, I've got eight. 1996 if uh if we get the experience points for those uh four hobgoblins we fought then i'm ready to level up as well uh, no gold for it oh james was asking are there pickled eggs uh in the same jar as that there are not pickles or eggs in the same jar no no they, he uh he, he went and got a large jar and and filled it with brine uh grimsby's a grimsby's a halfling is he not yes he is okay uh what kind are you a tall fellow or are you a stout or a hare foot i'm quite stout okay well, if you get if you get uh, hollowed out and turned into a, a flask, there would be your handle and there'd be your spell. Okay, uh, so yes, uh, the afternoon wears on. What do you guys wish to do? Well, let's. Well, we have one character who's currently actually whose player isn't here, or is mm -hmm. he, um, who's incapacitated. Right? Well, was. <laughs> Correct. So we can leave him behind. We can leave him in an arms behind. Um, all we really have to do is I have to rest for down in about three more hours, recover my spells, and we can head back out. So what? Uh, I didn't see the BVH wasn't going to be here. Uh, uh, Boone, right? Mm -hmm. So right. Boone ain't here. Um, he is not. Duran's here. We got. Two, three. We've got three men at arms that are capable of traveling with us. Yep. Correct. We got Grimsby. Tonsil's down for bed rest. Mm -hmm. And a man at arms yeah. is down for bed rest. 
Right. So well, I think we just leave them behind and head back in. <clears throat> Any of you folk around here want to follow me into the caves of chaos? Uh, suddenly, they're all interested in anything but. <laughs> <laughs> I got ten pieces of gold. And more where it came from. Uh, and they, these, are, these aren't fighting folk, unfortunately. Pathetic. I think we'll be, uh, we'll be alright. One of them offers, I used to be an adventurer, and then I took an arrow to the knee. Yeah, of course you did. Probably from lot, the back. I'd be a lot warmer and a lot happier with a belly full of mead. Okay, uh, so whither goest thou, adventurers? Head back out in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Um, wh where should we be going? Go back to the caves? Well, we've cleared out the hobgoblins. What about the... Isn't there like another cave on like the top right that we haven't been in yet? But there's other places to go too, right? Isn't there... Um... You 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 all dealt with some lizard men when I was when I was resting, wasn't weren't you? Didn't you? Oh, we were we were chasing spiders, weren't we? Is there spiders there? Well, we were chasing uh, the spiders and hit the lizard men. Ah. Yes, and uh, the lizard men were quoted as saying, <laughs> "Typical lizard men." Yeah, mm, as, as spiders be spiders be fast bugs. We don't yeah. want to go with fewer than necessary. And we got no priest. Uh, it's okay if that spider bites you. It's the priest ain't going to save you anyway. Um, I wasn't asking for me to save. <laughs> I was asking that he be killed first. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, that's fair. Um, we, can bring, we, can bring, we can bring him back a live one and set it loose in his bed. <laughs> Not a bad idea. I'd rather take my chances with the caves than the poison of the spiders. You and me both. Okay. Let's do it then. Uh, if I may ask, Sir Standard, make sure you have that slumber time spell ready. That's very useful. Uh, absolutely. Um, it's, I always... Well, if I'm not messing with Rug, I have it ready. Um, is there is there a place I can like uh, stash all the gold and stuff that I have because I'm tired of carrying it around? It's like it's like fifty pounds. Um, I, figured, right? I figured we had a foot locker in the uh, yeah. I mean, you, this point. you have an apartment uh, at the inn. You can keep it in there and hopefully uh, right. So we do have a private room in the inn that's kept us and locked and whatnot. Uh, sure. It, and it doesn't the um, loan bank also produce, provide sort of security deposit box type thing? I remember I put money in there or very early in the game. They I, they do. They that's do. what I thought I've been. Grimsby's been doing most of the time. He doesn't want to carry. All stuff. right. Is it safe to assume that I just leave some of that stuff there? Because I don't think I was visiting at the time. I think I was drinking. Or I can go do it now. I just don't want to waste time on that. That's entirely up to you, my friend. Right, so I'll I'll uh, make a notation that I'm storing some the majority of my money there. Okey Thank you. Can Rude count? Of course he can. I mean, like above ten. I ain't stupid. You sure? You won't find out. I do every day. Yeah, so you think. Culture has no meaning to me, Elf. Art has no meaning to me. I, but I know how to spill blood. I consider and I know precisely how much experiment. I spilled. Well, of I course consider, you do. I consider your mind a scientific experiment because every day I run the same tests and every day it gives me the same results. So it's actually reaching the point of being a postulate. Well, I consider you a girl, so how about that? <laughs> my, theorem is, <laughs> my theorem is confirmed. <laughs> All right. Um, Enough math jokes for today. Um, let's go back to the the next day. Let's yep. go back to the uh, the caves, and maybe we have Duran, who will be a silent partner. Yes, mm -hmm. Duran has taken a vow of silence and will speak to us through the rolling of the mystical bones. He just writes a little note. 
Shows I'll ask you a yes or no question, Duran, and uh, if it, I'll roll a d6. If it's a one to three, it's a yes, and if it's a four to six, <laughs> give me a ping, Vasily. One ping only. <laughs> Range to target. One ping only, Vasily. Comrades, today <laughs> we sail into history. We will conduct our missile drills while we listen to their rock and roll music. Then we will <laughs> share to keep and join some of our comrades in some warm socialist friendship. All right. So um, you march out for the keep, uh, for the caves, rather. The keep of monsters. <laughs> You realize that the keep the, the keep on the borderlands is the caves of chaos for the monsters in the caves of chaos. Let me tell you time. <laughs> we built a fortress on dark border with evil humans. <laughs> okay. Uh, nothing untowards happens. You find yourself back at the ravine and uh, the man at arms who is basically acting as your teamster says, um, what if we tie the horses up near the road and not near the ravine and hope for the best and I accompany you? I was still ah, I think that's a great idea. That works. All right. So he secures the, the horses in a copse of trees near the road. You have a bit of a longer walk back to the ravine, and there it is in its open awfulness caves like maggot holes dotting the walls of the ravine, sloping up. Uh, where to? So, so on the goblin side, there's goblins on the first floor, hobgoblins on the second floor. Is there a third floor? Not immediately on the south side. Uh, there is one kind of on the southwest near where the ravine sort of comes to a point to, to the west. Uh, okay. And on the other side, the kobolds are on the first floor. I know we have, we've seen cave on the second floor, but we've never been up there. Correct. And then kind of mirroring the one that was sort of towards the apex, but on the south is one that's on the apex, but to the north. And, and that is the slime cave. Uh, no, that cave is actually all the way at the bottom concealed by trees. Okay. The, I'm talking about one that's much higher up that you can gotcha. actually see from the floor of the ravine. Gotcha. So, gentlemen, and I use that term loosely, which cave do we want to go into? Can I ask a clarifying question for the DM first? Of course. Does the one with paralyzation work on anything except for things that are immune paralysis or only humanoids? Well, it was well identified, so let's look it up, and I will let you know. Yeah, because if if I can if I can paralyze something like an ooze with it, I mean, shit, why not? I'd feel better about it. I know in the um, in the pools of radiance games, etc., they let you do it, um, but. You know, they were a good copy of the games. I don't know how how they hand. I don't think the way they handled magic items was perfect, though. Okay, wand of paralyzation. The wand shoots forth a thin ray of bluish colors to a maximum of six feet or six inches, rather. So sixty feet. Uh, if the ray touches any creature, it must save versus uh, wands or be rigidly immobile for five to twenty rounds. Any creature, any okay. creature. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I'll take it. Um, all right, well, gents, uh, I have very little fear. So um, why don't we go up to that top one? What's the worst that's going to happen? I'm sorry, which top one? Uh, the one by the point. Uh, the, the one back, like, southwest side or whatever, by the up, up where the point is. On the way up there. Why not? Southwest or northwest? Because there's two up there. What about above them kobolds? There are caves above the kobolds also. Hmm. Have we been in those yet? I don't think so. Nope. nope. Nine. 
it seems like they got sort of a, you know, from what I hear of orc tribes, there's a certain filthiness. The filthiest ones are lowest, and the less filthy are highest. So, we've seen Ooh. goblins, we've seen hobgoblins, we've seen kobolds, maybe we get more goblins. Hob kobolds? We saw. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we get dogs. <laughs> We've seen gnolls, I think. Coblins. Well, Coblins. <laughs> I thought we saw a pack of gnolls already too. Okay, so just to just to tell you guys, uh, on the north side of the ravine, at about the same level up, at about 50, 60 feet up, um, you've got three caves. One is behind a copse of trees. Uh, one is about maybe a hundred feet east of that. And the other is almost all the way at the end of the ravine. That is on the north side. Well, fellows, let's just take the first one we find there on the second level. That Agreed. way we, uh, you know, work our way down Agreed. in an organized fashion like McGran always told me to do. That's what I'm thinking. We're low on fodder. The deeper we go, the farther we gotta come to get out. Yeah, and we don't yep. want things behind us when we're trying to get out. So maybe we take that first one, the, uh, I guess it's the easternmost one on the north side, one level up. Yep. So above Cobalt's, all the way to the east, that one. Yep, now that we have those... Hey, you're pretty down. smart. I yeah, thought your brain would be small like your body. It's concentrated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you think brains have more wrinkles? They probably do. Lots of wrinkles. <laughs> or and it's don't worry, I won't tell anybody wrinkles. about the hair on your feet. <laughs> yeah, they have to make up for the size with more wrinkles, I guess. Yeah. Maybe, maybe okay. their feet contain brains, too. Like, you know, separate brains. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to the easternmost, northernmost opening, correct? Easternmost. On the yeah. second level, yeah. Okay. Actually, all right. we do this like we did before, where I'll you'll you'll all collect to the entrance. I'll sneak in and bring people back out for you. Um, it works for me. Sure. I was just going to go in there as a group, but that works. Ooh, I like that idea. I'll stay in the back. At the back, you're always in the front. No, nope, but I ain't I, got me tonsil, me dwarf. I ain't got him. I tell you what, I'll take the left side, you take the right, just like old days. Sure. Okay. Um. <laughs> I I have a better idea. I'll step up and replace you. How about that? Go for it. You forget I have an AC of one. I fight yeah. next to an elf. Definitely go for Wonders it. never cease. And then okay. uh, Grims will be right but will be behind them and uh maybe next to Duran. And the men at arms should be uh up near the front too, because there's they got pointy things. Yeah, they have spears. So um two men at arms with spears. Um a third with a sword, so he'll have to get in at some point. He'll probably he'll find a spot. And um let's go. And Duran and uh, Grimsby will be near to the back, keeping keeping an eye out behind him. Actually, can I let a man arms borrow that third man arms borrow my short bow? Absolutely. That way, at least he'll get two shots. And the only difference between me and man arms is that plus one. So. Actually, a fighter one has better to hit than a fighter zero. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's but, true. But it's just, a, it's like 5%. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a co total difference of, I think, 10% between me yeah. and me and him. Um, so. Okay, so what is your marching order? First rank, please. Or Canel. That'd be, yeah, Vrug on the left, Standard on the right. Okay. Uh, and second rank is your men at arms, and third rank is Grimsby. And Duran, if Duran can Grim call up. Grimsby and Duran, okay. And the men at arms um, was in the third rank, because we have, we have three men at arms with us. Of the four. Okay. 
Uh, do me a favor there, uh, Mobius, and uh, type in the green room chat and let me know what um, what your uh, your spells you have prepared are. But in you enter. Uh, you can see as you walk into the uh, cave entrance there, uh, these are worked stone tunnels, or at least so they appear to be, um, about, looks like it goes in about 30 feet, and there is a, uh, it basically goes up to a junction, and it turns to the left and turns to the right. You can see this before you even enter. Are you going to proceed to that junction? What do you, I, elf I show you? Same thing they do to you. Let's go ahead and proceed to the junction. Alrighty. I'll let the, I'll, I'll try to con inconspicuously make sure the elf walks a couple of steps ahead. In front of you. <laughs> That's fine. You, you really, I think Brute has like double my hit points. You realize that, right? All I know is I got seven. I have five. Well, that's not quite double, but... You, you have double my hit points, so you stay in the front. Yeah. <laughs> five is double yours? I'm... I am sorry. I got three. <laughs> oh, that's okay. pretty bad. Yeah, but I'm heavier. That's fair. That's fair. I thought, had, I thought you had two. I was like, damn. Okay, no wonder why. All right, but no. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, um, so you proceed to the intersection, and immediately on your right, because you you know you're all clank clank clanking as you walk along in your plate mail. You are not surprised nor do you surprise a group of four orcs that are occupying what appears to be a guard room to your right, about 20 feet away. Uh, one of them shouts an alarm, and uh, they're all grabbing up spears. And let me just see real quick. Um, they're all grabbing up spears. Uh, so, Vrug, what are you doing? All right, so there's uh, they already shouted an alarm. I'm a half orc, right? So I can hear oh, that they've right. already shouted an alarm, and it's it's on. Yes. All right. Well, I'm not charging into a, this. Is a round. So we stepped up into the say the ten foot square in the middle of the junction. Turn right, ten foot passage, and those guys are there. Uh, um, let, me, let me be accurate in telling you how far away they are. Uh, Doom Sword. I don't want to say it's 10 feet and then be like, oh no, it's actually 30 feet. Get ready to get chopped into pieces. Um, it is uh, it is 20 feet down. So you would have to spend a round moving if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to move up and attack. Unless I charged and they haven't set spears yet. So I would have to right. Yeah. Have they, they haven't set spears. They have not set spears. They've just grabbed them up to do combat with. Okay, it would be. Um, so the so the way we play this would charge be a reasonable. Act. Can they set because I know last time when I said charge, it went before they had the opportunity to set them. If they're not already set, I can just charge into that mess without having to worry about a spear being set against me. Nobody is surprised. They will probably set their spears and strike you first. Okay. But okay. Right. Right. And now I'm holding my position and I'm going to duck down behind my uh, shield in case one of them decides to throw. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Mark, how about Grimsby? Uh, Grimsby's staying near the back, but he's looking down the left-hand side because he's worried the orc's going to come that way. Okay. Sir Standard? Um, I'm going to stand in first guard with my uh, sword and with my uh, basically sword point forward. Okay. Um, how about your, your men at arms? They're all second rank. Yep. Um, there's so, shield wall and spears or spears. Yep. yep. Okay. And, uh, can the third one get any arrows in? Cause even though we aren't advancing arrows have reach. Uh, if you order him to fire his, his composite bow, he will. Absolutely. 
Okay. Um, and uh, Mobius, uh, let me know in chat if Duran is, is going to be casting a bless. He, he tossed his stuff in chat. All right. Uh, all right. So you're gonna you're gonna whap with staff from rank two. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Let's go ahead and roll initiative, and we'll just start back up at the top. Um, Doom Sword, roll initiative, please, for the side. All right. Come on, big money. Oh yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, they're yelling alarms, but you may go ahead and fire any missiles at them before. Uh, they a oh. twelve. I don't think that will. Helps. No, uh, I'm gonna check the. Uh, let's see, twelve. Uh, no, that sails past. Um, so they uh, they march forward. They've got their spears out. Um, they're not coming all the way up to you just to run up onto your attack. So they move forward ten feet. And if you want to move into them, uh, you'll you'll have to do that. Um, you'll basically it'll be a meeting engagement, but they're not they're not running. Duran is uh, using his didgeridoo. Um, all right, <laughs> can I get my second arrow then? Fire your second arrow, yes, please. Absolutely. We would prefer he didgeridoo don't. That is a 19, and that is absolutely a hit from a man-at-arms. Roll your damage. There we go. Nice. And my bow sings. Okay. Rush in and die, you dogs. Hey, we can stand at the stalemate forever. I was a man before I was a king. Absolutely. So that was six, and... Um, that's... Uh, oh, crud. Let's see. I'm almost certain that we'll kill him outright. Um, Area 7, come on, quit doing that. All right. Uh, I think that is sufficient. Yes, that kills him outright. Oh, thank you, Vaughn. Thank you for the uh, super. Vaughn says, go team. Slava adventurers. Okay. Uh, so orcs dropped. Uh, do you have any more arrows to fire? Uh, no, those were those two. Okay. Um, the orcs are bellowing and uh, yelling and raising general hell. Um They are going to. Oh, Finger says. For spooked bat knock over to heroism potion on drug. <laughs> I appreciate the supers. I really do, guys. Thank you all so much. All right. Uh, so we have some. The the orcs are set up. Um couple of hurled spears coming back in your direction and they both miss clatter clatter okay um that i think finishes the round uh what are you guys doing same thing okay, same so thing we got what two hurled spears uh yeah they they hurled spears that went sailing over your heads into the darkness Right, and they haven't drawn another weapon hide yet, or whatever. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going to close in combat. One of those guys who threw a spear. Assuming that's I'm okay. capable of that. They, uh, yeah, I mean, you're now close enough that, that you can engage in melee. Uh, the orcs are closing to engage in melee. Uh, Sir Standard, uh, you're going to have an orc in your teeth uh, in this round, so just letting you know. All right, All right. <laughs> Grim's going to hide in shadows back here because he thinks he's going to have other orcs coming up to him. Okay. Not good enough. All right. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. Grimsby, you're looking, you're very close to the opening. It's like hide in shadows. Where? <laughs> but I try. All right. Uh, okay, let's roll initiative, please. I think it's my turn. Uh, yes, it is. There you go. Uh, party goes first. Do you have uh, two orcs up? One orc back with a spear. Uh, so we'll start with uh, Vrug. Doomsword, do your thing. All right, I close in aggressively and slice him across the chest. Diker! In orcish. Bummer. That's AC-10. Right. He ducks under, your, ducks under your swing and comes back at you with his uh, iron orcish scimitar. Uh, Sir Standard, do your thing, please. All right, arrow first. That will not hit. Okay. Uh, me, and then I have two spears I have to roll. Nope. Uh, that, will, that will miss. Spear from an arms. That will miss. And spear from an arms. And that will miss. Dear Christ on a cracker. Okay. Orc versus Vrug. That is a hit. a hit. That is four points to Vrug. Orc versus Standard. That nope. is a miss. Um, you hear the tramp of hobnailed boots and the flap of feet coming from the west, Grimsby. Just letting you know. Um, Go back to the opening. I have I have a plan for them. That's great. Okay, uh, looking to the west, Grimsby, you see no fewer than five orcs similarly arrayed as this group. They're all carrying spears and they have weapons on their belts. They're moving in. The men at arms are pivoting. Uh, let's get our party declarations. Um, uh, first of all, Mobius, if you're going to bless or anything like that, let me know. Uh, what is Vrug doing? You have orcs in front of you, orcs coming behind you. Yeah, uh, what do I have in front of you? So, did anybody close past me, or I'm just here, and we got four orcs in front of me, basically. They're just there, and they're, they're, com- they're coming from behind you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, whatever, man, to the death. We got three orcs in front of us, remember? Uh, one three death. orcs in front of you, correct. Um right. Duran pulls out his holy his holy beads and starts to starts to chant, wave his hand around, swinging the holy beads. There, uh, he's probably going to be casting a spell. Um, Mark, how about Grimsby? Grimsby, you're going to be uh, good. Grimsby will use his sling at least once on the orcs coming at us from the other side. Okay, because they will have to advance unless, of course, you guys lose initiative, in which case they'll advance, and then the sling will be not really usable. Um, all right, Sir Standard, what are you doing? I'm going to order my men at arms to keep pressing the orcs in front of us, the three in front of us. Okay. Um, I will turn um, and cast sleep on the ones as they show up. Okay. And for the record, orcs are one hit die monsters. So you will do 2d4 of them. That's okay. I, I got a good chance of rolling uh, five on 2d4. All right, uh, and just real quick, I want to check on something here. Okay, uh, so Bless will be completed at the end of this round, but when it is done, your two hit is raised by one. Any opponents you face for the uh, six melee rounds duration that it is will be reduced by one. All right, uh, let's go ahead and roll initiative, and I think we are to um, Sir Standard. Yeah, well, let's have a look. Oh, that's bad. Uh, All right. Yes. Good enough. Uh, Grimsby, you may loose a, a sling stone before they are upon you. Um, and I've got a plus three on this. That's still not good enough. Probably. 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, it clacks off of his uh, cure bully or whatever else he's wearing. So they spend this round closing up. So they're in your teeth. Um, 
sleep goes off, roll your dice. Yep, and my men at arms and stuff have attacks as well. Uh, that's right, but your sleep goes first, so. How about Not that? Bad. Wow. How about they rush that? forward, and as they're coming forward, they're just, oh, thud. Sleepy. Boom, 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 boom. So they're all down on the floor. Um, I set them up for you, Mark. Knock them out. Back in the front, um, we have three orcs and three men at arms can attack with uh, spears. And what about? I got mine too. And of course, yeah, I mean, blow my physical die for my virtual roll. <laughs> 13 wow. is. Fuck. Uh, let's see. Well, no, you still get the plus two bonus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, With bless, that might. Uh, Well, the bless isn't active yet. The bless Uh, isn't active yet, but um, let's see. But that's uh, 13, and we'll see. I go by the module stats, by the way. Sometimes the module stats, particularly when you're converting a basic module to an advanced module, you'll find they're a little different. Um. That is actually sufficient to hit. Uh, it's actually a hit. Well, this is very okay. important then. That is that is a hit. Die. Uh, and that is sufficient to kill him. So there are two orcs to the east. Uh, there are five sleeping orcs to the west. Um, men at arms, stabby stabby on the remaining orcs. Arrow. Uh, a 20 is a hit. Roll your damage. Two, uh, two will not kill him. It's a two from the arrow. And then... I don't I don't think that'll hit. Uh, not from a level zero fighting man. It won't. No, unfortunately. And then that will. Okay. And homie buddy had a spear, so... Four. Okay, so the two remaining orcs are both wounded. Um, and then arrow. Take your shot. Nope. Uh, nope, that will miss. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and uh, roll initiative for the new round because there's just a couple of orcs that are up, but Mark is Grimsby coup de grying the sleeping ones. Yeah, and collecting purses as he goes. Okay. Uh, you are all now under the effects of a bless. Uh, Mark, just uh, make a note of this physically where you're at. Uh, let's see. There are five. So the only thing of note that you're going to collect. Is 27 Electrum pieces. Fancy. Thank you. All right, so uh, you're going through and you're going through and uh, putting a toad sticker behind each of their ears. Um, back over here, these two. Uh, they are cornered. They will uh, continue to fight. Uh, and we are to um, Mobius. Do you want to roll initiative for us, my friend? Roll a d6. The orc's got a four. Neither one of those does it. <laughs> so even added together, those don't. All right. Uh, so they are attacking. Uh, this one is on a man at arms. That is a miss, and this one is on Brug. And that is a miss. So, counterattacks, please. And uh, there's Bless in effect now, so plus one. Yes, Bless in effect. Woo, wait, you love to see it. All right, solid hit. And the Bless is only on two hit, so... Uh, you cut him down, so that's going to be two men at arms, uh, unless the third one wants to fire into very close melee and risk um, hitting his fellows. No, can the third one go help um, 
uh, go help coup de gras orcs? If you order him to, he will gleefully. That's fine. That'll he'll he'll be doing that. So that way, I can turn my attention so it's me and two men at arms. All right, you and two men at arms on the remaining orc. All right, you want to start things off, Rude? He's already attacked. Uh, I already attacked. Yeah. Oh hell! All right. Yeah. Nope. That's a miss. That is a hit. And last but not least, uh, thirteen twenty-one uh, are uh, thirteen yeah. fourteen from a zero level at arms. Um, yeah. Fourteen zero level is a hit. Cool. All right. So I'll just roll both these. <laughs> well, does that finish one off? Uh, you know, they had all taken some damage, so that is sufficient. Uh, and he he is dead. What happened? Stab, stab. It's only a flesh wound. And from that lot, you receive uh, 20 electrum pieces. 20 electrum pieces. Um, the orcs that are the orcs that there are no orcs remaining. Um, the time remaining on bless is you have uh five more. Actually, we're going to go with the AD and D interpretation, which I think is is that in turns or is that in rounds? Nope, that's in rounds. So you have you have five more rounds of bless if you want to try and quickly find something to mix it up with. Uh... Duran. Might you call upon your god to close my wounds? Uh, a request there for a CLW from uh, from Vrug Dorn, uh, Theron, if you wanna if you wanna do that. It's entirely up to you, the player, though. I, the dungeon master, am not ordering you. You collecting chaos says I just sold a Jar Jar Binks action figure. What is wrong with people? Hey, man. Uh, kid's got to have something to shoot at with his first BB gun. He says he will. All right. Uh, let's see. I'll let you go ahead and roll that. Uh, can I do a pass of the room while he's doing that and see if there are any secret doors, etc.? Uh, there's... Sure, let's see. So you spend... Uh... You take a quick run over the room? No. There's nothing. There's just filthy orc stuff here. Um, and since uh, he hadn't rolled for that, there you go, Vrug. That is eight hit points back to you. Fwam. That's not more orc blood. Uh, all right. All right, gents. Um, so now go down the left? Sure. I am now, as they say, out of gas, but we've dealt them a pretty good blow. But you have a fancy stick. That I don't plan on using on these. <laughs> what about a sword? That's fine. I'll use a sword. Let's do it. But I'm not gonna waste I'm gonna I'm not gonna waste this wand on orcs. It'll affect anything. Anything. Orcs. Yeah, are yeah anything. but if it's your life or that <laughs> wand. Orcs are too puny for that. I'm not worried about them. I'll be in the back. Y'all can do what you want in the front. Go for it. Okay. Yeah, so, I assume we move quickly. Yeah. yeah. Moving to the west. Um, you enter a room. There's a great fireplace in the south wall, and many tables and benches are in this 30 by 50 chamber. The table at the north end has a large chair at the end. Uh, you know, you probably assume a uh, leader type is there. Uh, there's a small fire of, ch fire of charcoal burning in the fireplace, but there is no one here. What exits do we have out of this room? Out of this room. I'm glad you asked me that. Well, I mean, obviously, there's the place you just came in. But also, um, on the north wall, about midway along the length of the room, uh, you see a tunnel. On the easternmost uh, wall to the north, you see uh, an opening. And at the far end of the room, on both the southern and northern sides of the far end of the room, there are tunnels that go west. So basically, you've got 
two to the north and two to the west. And you can faintly hear the sounds of milling about and that sort of thing to the west from the two tunnels. Which way off? To the west. To the west it is, then. We make haste. Okay. Um, you've got about a round of bless left. You heard their voices. You're not surprised. You're not trying to be quiet. They're not surprised. There's a large number of orcs in this chamber. Um, this looks like a common area because uh, there are 12 male orcs, there are 18 female orcs, and 9 young. Um, the males uh, quickly grab up uh, short knives, swords, that sort of thing, and uh, they look at you. And they begin to advance slowly but menacingly. Can I parlay? Uh, sure. What do you say to them? I say, in, in Orkish, we are not here for you. We have already wrought havoc throughout these caves. We are looking for your leader. Okay. Give him to us, and the children will be left alone. All right, and your charisma to orcs is what? Uh, a nine? Eight. Eight. An eight. Okay. You are but few, half breed, and you associate with a leaf ear. We will chop you. We will eat you. We will make shoes of your halfling. Kill them all for old one eye. And they, uh, they proceed <laughs> to move forward. Your parlay having failed. Um, so to describe this room, and as I said, there are nine, uh, orcs here. Let me get to the map. That is not the right map. <laughs> Suddenly you're in the guild house in the keep. I'm doing that sort of mind screw thing. These aren't orcs you've been killing. These are fellow, uh, these are fellow citizens. Okay. Uh, the room is 50 feet to north south by 40 feet to east west. You came in the middle of the eastern wall. So it's basically you've got uh, 20 feet to the south and 20 feet to the north. And they're kind of bunched up sort of in a, in a rough skirmish line, these nine orcs. Uh, and they are, um, they're about 20 feet away. So if people decide to close into melee, everybody will be able to melee in this round. Let's get in order of operations. You have, but a round of bless left. I had to keep an eye on the green room where poor Duran can only, uh, uh, chat with us. Uh, let's start down. Vroog, what are you doing? 20 feet, uh, sufficient to charge into that mess. Um, You've charged already in the last turn, so... No, you didn't. I closed. Uh, none of us oh, charged. You closed. Okay, yes, you can charge with a capital C. It's absolutely enough, yeah. No, I'll just do that. Okay. Um, uh, Mark, what about Grimsby? An orc just yelled something about making shoes out of you. I, I know, that's very offensive to a halfling. Uh, they don't like shoes. <laughs> so he will he'll do... The best thing he can know how to do, which is hide in shadows and hope that he can escape. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sir Standard, you and the three men at arms. Um, well, I'm going to respond with their threats in Infernal and um, charge in. Charge with a capital C? Mm -hmm. With the men at arms as well. Okay, the men, the men at arms uh, will will go uh, crashing into you. Um Duran, what about Mobius? Uh, let me check the... Uh, down. So, okay, so he's going to uh, missile fire. Charges go before... Uh, we're just going to do like a grand... Well, not really grand, but it's, you know, it's kind of like the, the Rohirrim versus the Orcs, but in, in tiny, tiny miniature as you guys uh, crash into each other. Uh, party, you all have longer weapons than they do, so we'll just start 
at the top of the roll. Uh, roll for Vrug, please. And this is um, uh, plus one for the Bless still. This is the last plus round of that. Bless. Last mm, round of right. Bless. That'll be a total of plus five. Come on. That 15. Is. Nice. That is. Four points. Uh, four points. Uh, I don't think that brings him down, but I need to double check that. Uh, while we're doing that, um, Mark Grimsby is hiding. How about the men at arms and uh, then Sir Standard, please? Sure. So uh, let's see here. So uh, Spear, it will get a plus one. That is so a hit. That's a hit. Let me roll the other Spear. No. That is a miss. Let me roll the other. Now let me roll a sword. That is so, a miss. Okay, so one of the spears hit for six points. And I was incorrect, Vrug. Uh, these orcs, uh, that, that was a sufficient amount to kill him. So that's two of the nine orcs are dead. Oh, and uh, my sword does not sing. Okay. Um, mm. Missile, f uh, let's go ahead and roll initiative then. Um, and I think we're over to uh, Devon, uh, uh, Mobius. But unless you guys roll a one, you'll, you'll go first. This is really only to determine whether or not he gets a slingshot off. All right, you do. You can zing one into the orcs. Uh, go ahead and roll your two nice. hits, please. Can you get two sling bullets to turn? Brilliant. That is a hit. Roll your damage, sir. Crap. Nice. That uh, one of the orcs is just like he is. He is holding. I mean, it's like a flap of skin. He's he's still up, but uh, there are seven orcs, uh, and one of them is very badly injured now. Uh, Mark Grimsby is trying to hide in shadows. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, just, uh, ever the, the female orcs and the children are backing up. They can see you. The skirmish line of orcs can see you. And, uh, Jesus. let's go ahead. No, that was a 76, buddy. Oh, crap. <laughs> so, I hate your dice. I can't read them. Yeah. The seven, the sevens are pretty badly, uh, uh, badly serifed. All right. So here we go. Um, Vrug, you killed your target. Uh, Sir Standard, you killed your target. Um, so let's see. Uh, that is an injured one that is going to rush over like an idiot uh, to try and do combat with um, with uh, Duran, but he has to move this round during it. So that leaves four orcs to attack. So that's uh, one on Vrug. One on Sir Standard and two on a couple of men in arms. So we'll start with Vrug. Uh, now you do not get a shield bonus, uh, but he is at minus one, so he misses. Um, this one is on Sir Standard, also at minus one. Uh, that will still hit you. And uh, wow, <laughs> yeah, he, he stabs you with a a, a rather dull knife. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and still manages to hit, but again, it's only point of damage. So this is versus a man at arms, and that is a miss. And this is versus a man at arms, and that is effectively a zero. So Duran, you have an orc in your teeth. You have four orcs who are still up. Duran, the one fighting you is one that you badly injured with a sling stone in the last round. Um, I'm guessing all you guys are going to melee, correct? Except for uh, Grimsby, who is uh, looking for a patch of floor to imitate. Yeah. Is um so get, what are the females back against the wall with the young behind them? Is that the thing? Yes, they're they're uh, pulling the whelps uh, behind them and trying to uh, stay out of this. All right, I'll attack a combatant. Okay, um, let's go ahead. Uh, oh, uh, Mark, is Grimsby doing anything this round, or just hiding? Uh, attempting to hide again, I guess. Okay, uh, Sir Standard, um, sword. 
All right, men at arms, spears. Yep, I'll advance in the sixth ward, and the men at arms will move up. Okay, and uh, staff time for Duran. <laughs> just uh, yes, staff time. Okay, uh, let's roll initiative and um, roll it for us, Doom Sword. All right, the orc force has a little bit more leverage, so we'll just start down the line. Uh, this one is uh, fighting Duran. That is going to miss. This oh. one is this one is uh, on Vrug. Fifteen. Let's double check. Uh, no bonuses or penalties apply here at this point. AC one. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. That's that's not a hit at all. Um, so that was one, two. Uh, Sir Standard is going to be the third one. That's a miss. Uh, Man at Arms. AC six. That's a that is a miss. Um, couple more against a Man at Arms. That is a miss. Last one's Get, AC seven. That's a miss, and the seventh and final one, the AC seven, is a miss. So they didn't lay a blade on you. Counterattacks, please. For you uh, should have considered differently. <laughs> oh, we will feed you to Moloch. You will die. All of you <laughs> die. <laughs> I'll eat you myself. All right. Uh, A14, 16, uh, that will hit. Absolutely. Ooh. Yeah. There are now six orcs. Um, Sir Standard. Sure. Do I effectively thrust into Longhort? We'll see. Nope. I do well. I do. do I just not. missed. Okay, well, uh, uh, you've still got three, three men at arms. That's a hit from a man at arms. So one hit. Uh, no. Nope. And I don't think that hits. Uh, flat 13, no, unfortunately not. Uh, hey! That is a dead orc, so that is uh, five orcs remaining. Um... Go ahead. Long sword does pay off. Uh, um, Mobius, whack with stick. Apply stick. Twelve. Um, I don't think you get a strength bonus or anything. Let's see. Clerics, twelve. Oh, just misses it. Just kind of bounces off his armor. All right, so there are five orcs remaining. Um... They're standing. They're they're standing tall. Five orcs left, and they're standing tall. So next verse, same as the first. I'm guessing from everyone. Yep. All right, and uh, Mark uh, Grimsby is attempting to hide again, or no? Uh, uh, no. Is there okay. is there like another exit from this room that the the women could flee? Because Grimsby's going to just tell them, you know, tell the women get out of here. Yeah. In Orkish, if there's a, okay. there's a way for them to escape, yeah, I mean they they can kind of curve around this and yeah. go out of get, go out a, a, a door. Get the hell out of here! Get out! All right. But, yeah, they they proceed to throw trash okay. and broken pottery and that sort of things at Grimsby. Instead, they uh, attack uh, Grimsby and kill him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You guys look over. Grimsby's on a spit. <laughs> 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 What did you say to them? Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, next verse, same as the first. Um, no, they they don't accept your parlay. They're just they're trying to cheer their males on. Um, but Mark, roll initiative for us, please, because I know what the, I know what these orcs are going to try and do, and I got a two, and you guys got a five. So you're probably going to do it to them first. All right, do it to it. Uh, 11, 
Hang on a second. I, I am 99% sure that's going to miss. Uh, yeah, that misses. Uh, Sir Standard. All right. Plus one. Eh, it's not going to matter. Mm. All right. And men at arms. That's not going to hit. That is going to hit. So one with sword hit. Yeah. One with spear misses. Uh huh. One with spear misses. Okay. Um, and Duran. So four damage from the guy with the sword. There are four orcs left. Duran. Uh, nice. 14. That is so close. That is a hit. That is a hit. You you connect with your staff. Uh, and you had hit this guy before. Um, you finish off the blow to the head, and he drops. There are three orcs remaining. Uh, so one on Vrug, um, one on a man at arms, and one on Sir Standard. So Vrug. That is a miss. That is a miss on Sir Standard. And that nice. is a miss on a man at arms. Um they're they're stacked up and they're they're hanging tough. Um no quarter. All right. Um if you guys are gonna continue to fight, they're gonna continue to fight. And I think we're over to you, sir standard. Roll initiative, please. Yep, let's see. <laughs> All right. And I I got a five, so once again, this was an on Vrug. 16. I don't think that's going to get you. AC1. AC1. No, no, that's not going to get you. This one is on Sir Standard. Mine's zero. And this is on a man at arms. That'll hit a six. 18. Yeah, that will definitely hit a six. Man at arms takes but a point of damage. Counter attacks, if you please. Uh, 13, 13 will absolutely hit. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right. You eviscerate him. There are two orcs remaining. Uh, plus one's 13. I don't think that'll hit. 13. Uh, no, from uh, uh, is that from you or is that from a man yeah, at arms? For, yeah, from me. That will absolutely hit. Oh, thank God. I finally hit something. Yep. All right. Plus one. So three points. Three. He's actually survived it. Your men at arms turn and attack him. <laughs> and yep. Duran, too, I suppose. Uh, that's a hit from a man at arms. Quickly make the boss look good. That is a hit from a man at arms. <laughs> That is a miss then, from Duran. And then one more. That is a miss. So, uh, yeah, they dogpile him and cut him down. So there are... Uh, yeah, he's dead. Oh, yeah. Many times over. So there are 18 females and 9 young in this room. Um, Grimsby continues to tell them in Orcish to get the hell out of here. Uh, they don't need more encouragement. They beat feet. They are stampeding out of this room through the, the northern exit. Can I chase them and make like menacing sounds with my sword, smashing on my shield or whatever to make sure that they at least to see where they go? Right? Okay. I would like them well, to leave. I, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you. You know, I, I'm guessing you give them enough of a lead uh, so that they don't just faint in fear. Yeah, yeah. Either way, I just don't want them going to Big Boss and you know, well, hey, check out these motherfuckers. Right here. Mm -hmm. They turn left and run up a slope. They're not headed back to where you guys left at, but that's so they not, turn north. They turned north. Yeah, that that's not to say there's not some. Exit that they might be going to up there, but they did not make for the uh, the cave exit immediately. Do you wish to keep pursuing them? No, nah, I'm going back to the guys. Okay, 
A uh, bunch of dead orcs lying on the floor here. Uh, what are you guys doing? Go through their pockets for loose change. All right. Yep. Um, yeah, do that, and then I think we'll, we should probably quite swiftly move on before the thief um, shows up. Okay. You get a total of... Breaking the roll, or 85 we? silver pieces from them. 85 silver, okay. 85 silver, correct. Nothing else in the room? That is, yeah, no, this is a, a large orc common area, so, you know, beds, uh, piss pots, that sort of thing, but nothing, uh, no nothing of note. Yeah, no uh, let me... Yeah, no, <laughs> none, of, none of them were sleeping on a, a 10 by 10 pallet of, uh, of uh, silk wrapped platinum pieces or anything like that. Let me double check something real quick, though. I don't want to say it is and that it isn't. Um, what do you think, you guys? Do you want to advance and try and take the chief as is or do you want to retreat? I'm fine. I'm ready for blood. I figured he would say that. Yeah, well, yeah I always say that, mostly. Yeah. Isn't that a bad company song? I'm ready <laughs> for blood. <laughs> dur, dur, dur. <laughs> it's not what it should be. Okay. Um, it's your standard, though. Remember, your fancy stick, which could paralyze anything. Yes. Orc chief is an anything. Yes, orc chief is valid. Regular orcs not valid. Okay, okay, good. Right to be clear, right? This thing has very, very few uses left. Very but few. But the orc chief could be one of them. Yes, <laughs> yes. If, if I will other... bravely go to the back of the party. Okay. Move forward. Okay, uh, so you're heading back out where the orcs, uh, the females, and the children went, correct? Yep. Yeah, I guess at that northern slope, correct. Okay, so the hallway slopes up. It goes about 40 feet and comes to a T-intersection. You have a door uh, to the right about 30 feet down, and you have a door to the left. Well, at least let me double-check the map. Uh, actually... Uh, I'm sorry, the door to the right is about 10 feet down. Uh, to the left, it goes about 30 feet and turns north. There's no door that you can that you can see. So door to the right, 10 feet. Hallway goes 30 feet and turns north. Uh, glancing at the uh, ground, there's no uh, idea of which way they went, no scat or anything no. like that. I should have at least scatted them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, no fear of poop there. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Damn it. Um, which way, Elf? Leafier. That's your new name until we kill him. Uh huh. Remember, <laughs> I will have my unseen servant tickle you all night so you can't sleep. Hey, that's, that's my thing, you know. <laughs> um, Jokes on you. That's my. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> to be fair, I could have him pluck your nose hairs too. Um, so that's good too. <laughs> you just come back, you wake up one morning, and you're completely bald. Um, okay, so uh, DM, quick question Yes, um, is there that door to our right? Mm -hmm. that in, um, is it a jar? Has it been touched? Doesn't look like it has been. Cool. Uh, there, there is a, there's a, a heavy brass plate. On the right-hand side of the door, as you look at it, it's got a keyhole in. Cool. Uh, yeah, we go straight. Um, they they didn't go through that door. Well, straight goes about ten feet and then ends in blank wall. So, I think you mean go left. Yes. Right west. We should go west then north. Third base. Yeah. Exactly. All right. 
Okay, so you go west. The hall goes about 30 feet and then turns sharply north. Looking around, north. It, only, it only goes about 10 feet north and then turns back to the west. We're stuck in a U-bend. But, well, it turns to the west or back to the east? Or am I... You're backwards because it's it's tur it turns to the west. Uh, the hallway then goes about forty feet uh, after the the northern turn. You know when you can look down, it goes about forty feet, and that terminates in a door. Well, the fair. Well, ladies first, by all means. All right, uh, I'm gonna move up closely to about twenty feet away. Okay. And then I'm gonna, and then I'm, if nothing happens, I'm gonna charge in at a door and try to smash it open with my uh, left shoulder. Okay. Um, nothing happens. You know, you wait for a heartbeat or two. Roll initiative, please. That would be. Does that need to be me or some, whoever was in? Uh, I'm sorry, not roll initiative. Uh, open, open door. door. D6 and, you know, how it is. Yeah, that you gets throw it. Throw your shoulder against it. The door bursts open. Um, wow. Okay, so the door bursts open and surprised totally surprised is uh a large ugly looking orc uh there's two well i mean you're a half orc ugly comely with orcs that's just your kind of opinion uh kneeling next Word. to him uh okay fair enough um they're they're kneeling down next to him and he's He's talking to uh, a female, you think maybe from the other room. She's she's got like an arm of of whelps. And they are just they are caught completely by surprise. You have total surprise over them, and that's where we're gonna leave it for this week. So um we will come back next week to deal with the uh with what you do when facing the uh the orc leader. Um, he is wearing chain mail and he has a large shield. So, um, we'll, uh, Long sword perhaps, um, yes, he does have a sword. So, uh, I'd like to thank everyone in the audience tonight. Thank you to my players. Of course. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Vrug. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Mark. Thank you, doom sword. Thank you, TK. Uh, sorry we couldn't get your audio working, Mobius, but hey, you were still in the thick of it. So big ups to you, uh, Mobius, for being the silent priest. Thank you, AJ Pickett, uh, Vaughn Gifford, and Vega for your supers. That is uh, always uh, super helpful. And um, so we're going to go ahead and pause it tomorrow night. Uh, Kyle will be back, and we'll have some super fun with Kyle. Um and who knows? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll drop another video where I'll hold forth on various opinions tomorrow. But until then, everybody, uh, it's not the orcs you got to worry about. Keep your eyes open for the owl bear. Peace and good night. Have you seen my owl bear? <laughs>